your job is to shoot on the street and cry in the dark. Don't ever forget that. Yeah, well, if you're if you're been thrown out, you're doing your job. Let's get it popping like it's New Year's Eve. At KingCast.net, we're here at the 2011 NEPA Winter Conference. And let me tell you something, folks. When it comes to the First Amendment and freedom of the press, we've got ourselves a really big show. <laughs> If you act like professionals, they'll treat you like professionals. One would hope. Yes. One would hope. I have video to the contrary, but we'll talk about that after your presentation. Oh, hell, I've been thrown out of more places than you count. <laughs> and I've been called names that you don't even want to think about. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, if you're, if you've been thrown out, you're doing your job. If you're not, then you're in the wrong place. Call me and he said, did you write this note? I said, yeah. I said, do you have a suit? I said, yeah. And I said, why? He said, because the man wants to see you at 5 o'clock in his office. I said, really? He said, yeah. Be here. I said, what's well, my day off? He said, be here. Typical photographer. I said, it's my day off. <laughs> so I got dressed and went down there. I walked into the managing editor's office, and his desk was totally clean. There was a copy of the copy paper I'd written on his desk. He said, did you really write this? I said, yeah. He said, he wants to see you. So I went through the little inner connector, the inner sanctum to the publisher's office. I go in there, and Joe's sitting on his couch. There's two couches on the opposite of the fireplace in his office. And the note, the original, was laying on the coffee table. He said, please, Mr. Holt, sit down. He called me B3 because I'm Robert C. Holt III, and he was Joseph Pulitzer III. So I called him J3, he called me B3. So I sat down and I said, uh, I'm real sorry about that note. And he said, well, he said, you know, I am not sure I would have used those words, especially the one starting in S and ending in Y. So that would not have been my choice. So I sent this to the board of directors of the company and asked their opinion of it. And they all wrote back and said that I had picked the exact perfect word for our reproduction. <laughs> and I said, am I being fired? He said, no, you're being promoted to director of technology. And he said, in a year, I want to know why our production is so shitty. One night, one rainy, cold night in St. Louis, i have been on the street about six months. Now, I was been shot for UPI for years and for AP, so I wasn't a newbie. But there was a triple murder up in North St. Louis. 5960 St. Louis Avenue. This the meet me in St. Louis house. The exact same house. They sent me up there and it was a dark, cold night, one o'clock in the morning. It was a black family, a black neighborhood, black cops, black reporter, Gerald Boyd, got ended up at the New York Times, got in trouble later. He got me in as a distant cousin to the family. And I'm the only white guy with him five miles anyway. The cops look at me and they go, do you want to go in that house? I said, sure, I'm a cousin. Okay. <laughs> By marriage, I guess. So they let me in, the family lets me in, and there's a living room on the left side, a hall, straight hall going back, and a stairwell going up on the right. I go into the living room, and sitting in the back of the bedroom, which would normally be a dining room, there was a master bedroom there with a king size bed in it. And there was a pool of blood that was about that deep and covered the entire bed. 
Well, I got a little unnerved at that point in time, knowing that I'm the only white guy within five miles, and the cops are leaving, and they're going to leave me there by myself with the report, and people that I don't know, and there's three bodies that just hauled out, a woman, the woman from the, the lady of the house, in her 50s, her next door neighbor in her 50s, both shot in the back of the head. <coughs> and a young kid, they had absolutely no idea who he was, he was about 17 or 18, laying in this pool of blood in the bed. In the bed. So the cop looked at me and said, well, we're leaving. Are you sure you're going to stay? I said, yeah, I'll stay. <coughs> I thought, well, I don't have a gun with me or a knife, but uh, I've got this potato masher, honey well scrolled, and I can fight my way out of here if I have to. That was a flash gun back then. It had a long handle on it. I'm sorry, you're all too young. So uh, <laughs> about two hours later, the back door opened. And this large black man in his 50s walked in the back door with a double bitted axe over his right shoulder and a machete and hammer held in the other hand over his left shoulder. The door slammed open. He comes walking down the hall to the front of the house. He's walking down. He's looking at me. He knows I don't belong there because he knows all his cousins and I ain't one of them. And I'm thinking, Christ, I've got a, I've got a Nikon F camera with an automatic strobe and a 24 millimeter lens. I couldn't screw this up if I had to. I've got an automatic everything, and if everything's set, I'm charged and ready to fire. I'm standing there, I'm scared to death. After being in combat, I have to tell you, I was scared to death. Front door bangs open, here come the cops. I'm standing on the landing. I mean, they meet right in front of me, this, this close to me. They're like that far away. 24 millimeter, they're dead meat. I've got them all. Face to face. Axes and knives. <coughs> I'm scared. And the cop says, where you been? We've been looking for you. The guy said, I've been working. What do you do? I've been reclaiming bricks down the street. He was cleaning bricks to make a living. He said, what are you guys doing here? And he looked at me. And he raises the axe up off his shoulder. Cop pulls his gun. And I'm standing there looking stupid, scared to death. And the cop says, Your wife's dead. We're looking for you. We don't know. We thought maybe we killed her. And the look on that man's face is going to make me cry right now. He died right in front of me. I missed the picture because I was scared. I was scared to death. And I looked up. He dies. He hits the floor, has a heart attack. Here come the PMTs. I'm taking pictures now. I shot all of that. But I missed the Pulitzer picture. The look on his face was... I never missed it again. Not one time. So you don't have a time when you're in a situation where you're uneasy. And you have to remember that your job is to shoot on the street and cry in the dark. Don't ever forget that. This was a tractor and trailer load of propane that blew up on Highway 7 and killed about 10 people. And uh, really messed up the highway. So, anyway. That was an ancient fire truck. Uh, well, it's in Missouri. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it's been used twice, and that's the second time we've used. <laughs> um, actually, that's a uh, that truck right there is a forestry truck.